Hello, this is Team Toast. That's Greg. Wow, this is like two in a row. I'm Jason, and today we're talking about the history of the mobile slash cell phone for our overseas viewers. Are you selling a phone? No, sell. Never mind. Roll titles. So why are we talking about mobile phones, Greg? Well, Jason, that's a great question. I know. What's the answer? Oh, because it's that time of year again, isn't it? Every year, every September... Goes freezing cold. My, hasn't it dropped here? Yeah. We've gone from like summer, which we didn't really have, to the ultimate freezing weather forecast time of year. Anyway, September is also... It's like Christmas for some people, isn't it? Well, it's my birthday, so, yeah. Nice shirt. Thanks. Um, the reason I say it's like Christmas for some people is because some uh, people get really quite obsessed with Apple phones, don't they? And it's that time of year when we're releasing another one. Another one, the iPhone 11. Yeah. Now, we're actually recording this a day before Apple's live announcements, or the keynote, do they call it. Um, but we so... know what it's going to be like. What I'll do is, obviously, I'll put in a picture of the new Apple phone now. Right. I can't now, because it's right. not been released. Right, but, but when you're in... today... Got you. Uh, now. Do we, do, we, do we look like we've seen it now, then? Yeah, got that. Okay. Um, well, I wow. think it looks amazing. Wow. Hey. What's that, that three camera thing on the back, though? Well, we're only it's going on what... It has got three. <laughs> we're only going on what we, we think it's going to look like, don't we? What's been leaked. I think... I I think uh, it's the worst looking, if it is the same one that we've seen, it's the worst looking iPhone they've ever brought out. I bet it hasn't got those cameras on now, but it looks beautiful. Everyone's Slick. going, what's he on about? Yeah, and then this whole episode's <clears> down <throat> the toilet, isn't it? But the leaks have shown pictures of a phone with a very large camera array on the back. Well, it's three circles with a big circle square. square around it, isn't it? It's horrible. Three lenses on the back of the Apple phone. One of them is rumoured to be a wide-angle lens. Uh, it's also rumoured that it will take HDR-style photographs by using all three lenses at the same time. Now, the um, thing is, there's a lot of people out there that probably disagree with what I'm saying because it probably is going to be amazing, the camera and everything. But I just think, I mean, I've got the XR, you're the same. That camera on there is tremendous. We, you've never had a camera better than that before, have you? Well, unless you spend thousands and thousands of pounds on a digital SLR or something. But That's yeah. what I mean. You're not going to get a better camera than that. So I don't know why they're focused on that. There's other things they can be focusing on. I know the big thing they've got is a new, better face recognition. So wherever you are, you can... Oh, come on. I think, here's my opinion, Greg. Go on then. I think because we have such good cameras in our pockets that are also video cameras and. Computers, really, aren't they? Yeah, and what do you call them? Still cameras. Um, that we have lost the value of photographs and videos. I agree. Because we can all do it so much now and we just get our phone out and we take a picture. And then it stays on your phone and you don't do anything with it. Whereas once upon a time, we had to take a picture on a camera. You didn't know if it was exposed properly or anything. You sent it away for two weeks. It came back, looked great. You put it in a box and every couple of years, you get the box down from the loft or wherever you were when you were getting the Christmas tree and you'd sit down and have a couple of hours going through your memories. We just don't do that anymore. How many times have you gone through your phone and you've gone, oh, I remember that picture? Not a lot. That's what I mean, you don't, do you? Um, there are some services where you can get prints sent to you if you send them off I don't really know how it works because I haven't done it but we're just not doing it anymore I don't think as a, as a race not just a nation but everybody is taking photos on their mobile devices and that's where they remain or and the other thing, go into the cloud let's be honest because you're really vain you know when you take a picture you never take the first one do you? I always do yeah I'm not bothered I'm just saying though some people um, they go, like, if it's a selfie, oh, that's not quite right, take it again, oh, that's not quite right. Whereas before, oh, yeah, it was a little square yeah. to look through, snap, and you got fingers crossed, that's a good one. My brother invented the selfie. What? Well, he didn't, did he? He did. No, he didn't, did he? He did, I'm going to tell you how. Go on, then. Back in the days, when you had those cameras where you had to get things developed, sent off two weeks, we had a family do, 
typical family do, rented the village hall, all that, family wedding, whatever it was, all the family were there with our point and click cameras with the cassettes in. Blu-ray was there. I didn't have Blu-rays then. So my brother's no, going around. Blu-ray was there. My brother's going around taking pictures of everyone. Oh, don't send, tell we me. We send off the film. I've got it. We send off the film, it comes back, I open up the pictures, and the first picture is of my brother's face. <laughs> <laughs> He's at the camera the wrong way around. The whole thing. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> So my What's brother your brother's invented name? Invented the selfie, Simon. Well done, Simon. So the Simon selfie. That should be called that, shouldn't it? The Simon selfie. That's genius. Anyway. I oh, see so you missed the entire party. You've got no memories of that. No, yet. just loads of pictures of Simon. <laughs> you can see some people in the background sometimes. Brilliant. Love that, Jase. Well done, mate. That's brilliant. So, anyway, Greg, when was the first Sir. mobile phone invented? 1985. You're wrong. Oh. Well, it actually goes back as far as 1908. Don't be really. stupid. When a US patent was issued in Kentucky for a wireless phone. Oh, this might make schools, this episode. Do you reckon? Well, a bit it's educational. Isn't history it? and education. However, the first mobile phone as you know it um, was on by Motorola on the 3rd of April 1973 and they were the first company to mass produce the first handheld mobile phone. Motorola? Yeah. Really? I you never liked Motorola, Nokia, didn't you? Yeah, well, I never liked Motorola. There was one I never Motorola. Uh, they were one I never touched. Right. Um, they also class two-way radios as the first mobile phones, so the types that taxi drivers have and things like that, and they call them the OG. Now you would think that would stand for original, wouldn't you? But it's actually zero G, as in like three G, four G, five G. Oh, so it had no G. No G. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, it was 1973 when the first kind of mobile phone as we know it was talked about and invented. And I remember there is a little clip somewhere of Tomorrow's World, which is a science program in the UK that talked about future technology, where they tested out one of the first mobile phones. I'll see if I can find it. If I can, here it is. This device is a prototype, a prototype whose trials are being carried out strictly governed by home office regulations. At the moment in the UK, approved mobile phones are really little more than transmitter receivers which put the caller in touch with a post office operator who dials up the number you want and then connects your remote radio extension with the rest of the telephone network. Here is a device which allows you to dial yourself. What this combination is achieving is minimising the chances of the telephone network being confused by the number which the radio caller dials in. And if it takes me longer than 20 seconds to dial anyway, I'll be cut off. If my call takes longer than three minutes, the system will automatically terminate that too. All features built in to minimise the chances of anybody wasting our valuable airwaves. So hopefully that was an interesting little clip. I mean, all this episode is fingers crossed, isn't it? <laughs> we don't know what the iPhone looks like. You lot do now. We don't know whether that advert is available. So you it's do what? now. Is the what? advert is available. I mean, this vodka's strong today, isn't it, this time of the morning? <laughs> if you can see a little glow coming from down there, it's because we've got the heater on. <laughs> it's fr freezing. I don't know what's happened. I genuinely don't know what's happened. Um, anyway... <laughs> As you will have seen from that, they're not quite the same as the mobiles that we know today, smartphones. Um, they had a battery. Oh, you might not have seen it from that. battery was like that big, like a briefcase, wasn't it? And the oh, phone yeah. sat on top. I remember my friend's dad had one, and he was the only one who had one, so he had no one else to phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, is it? M uh, telephones weren't as popular then in the house either, were they? No, so I don't really I remember getting one. our first phone. Yeah. So. And if anyone came round to use your phone, you'd just put a little box by it, so that's put. 20p, 10p in the... So you know that, the ring ones you had to do? Yeah. Why was the emergency no, the furthest away? I know, yes. So you're in a rush, you've got to wait for it to come all the way back round. <laughs> Never understood that. <laughs> um, so yeah, they looked very different to how they do now, and obviously they went on to develop into the smartphones that we have today. But I'll give you some uh, interesting dates in the development of the mobile phone, Greg, shall I? Or cell phone if you live in America or elsewhere. The first successful mobile tele 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 telephony service was offered to first class passengers on the uh, Deutsche Reichsbahn on the route between Berlin and Hamburg. Guess when, Greg? 1926. 26. 
1946, the first calls were made on a car radio telephone in Chicago. What, what year was that? 1946. Oh, so during the war then? Yeah. No. War finished in oh, just, just Yeah, that's what I meant. Due to the small but number what of... what I'm saying is, though, they did all that and they fell with it just after, after the war yeah, well, or still probably, recovering from the war that's amazing it probably would have been more useful in the war wouldn't it absolutely due to the small number of radio frequencies available the service quickly reached capacity it was probably about 12 <laughs> <laughs> 1973 Greg mm. general manager at Motorola Communications made the first public mobile phone call on a device that weighed 1.1 kilograms that's just more than a bag of sugar come on get to the Nokia Right, I'll skip to 1985, yeah. when comedian Ernie Wise made the first public mobile phone call in the UK from outside the Dickens pub in St Catherine's Dock to Vodafone's HQ. Now, hold on a minute. I knew that, but I also thought he did the first cash point as well. He might have. I might be wrong. I'm sure he did the first cash point. He might have. Well, that's interesting. 1987, the technical specifications for what became the mobile phone network, then GSM, uh, were formed based on digital technology. 1992, Greg. Here we go. Now we're getting to it. The world's first ever SMS text message was sent in the UK by Neil Papworth, aged 22. At the time, he was a developer for a telecom contractor. Uh, and he was developing a message service for Vodafone. So Vodafone were the first people to use text messages. And the text message read... Merry Christmas, and was sent to Richard Jarvis, another worker at Vodafone. Ridiculous, considering it was April. <laughs> uh, 1996 and 97, UK phone ownership stood at just 16% of households. A decade later, the figure was 80%. That's a lot of growth. Oh, it? you mean mobile phone? Yeah. I thought you were talking about the home phone. Uh, oh, right, it's a BL. Oh, my God, that's a big jump, isn't it? The explosion growth was in part driven to the launch of the first pay-as-you-go non-contract service. See, it just makes you smile, doesn't it? Because you must remember your first. I do, yeah. We the were phone. in We were in Wales. North Wales together? Not together. And I was one of the first people to get a mobile phone, and it didn't work anywhere. Yeah. I had to walk I, see, to we a were, certain point. We worked together then, back in the day, many years ago. 97. 90s, yeah, not 98, I wasn't. Anyway, we worked together, and I remember him getting this phone, and I was so jealous. But, like you said, he had to go out to the one point that worked. There was that one worked. point in the whole place where it worked. And I think the calls were about £2.50 So an hour. expensive. <laughs> so expensive. Uh, 1998, the first downloadable content sold to mobile phones, and it was a ringtone. Do you remember those adverts in the paper? You had to text a yeah. number, and you'd get a, a yeah. ringtone or a new logo. Yeah, because you don't remember this one, but when we worked together years after that... We had the Nokia, small than Nokia, 82 something, and you did that for Street Hawk. Did I? Yeah, and I went, that sounds nothing like Street Hawk, and you were going, no, it's amazing, it's amazing. I can't believe you don't remember that. Yeah, and you could send off the logos as well. Yeah. You change the logo on yeah. your screen. Uh, 1999, emojis were invented. Okay. When do you think... 3G became available, Greg. Oh, God, it's saying 2000? 2003. Mm. 3G standard was adopted and we all thought it was amazing, but now it seems really slow when you only get 3G, doesn't it? Uh, when you're out that's what frightens me, how much everything moves on. You know, you think of the... All right, technology moved on from the 40s to, say, the 60s. Absolutely. But from, say, 2000 to now, it's scary. When was the first iPhone released, Greg? Oh five? No, oh seven. Two thousand and seven, the iPhone debuted, and it was solely available on O um, two. In two thousand and nine, the first four G phones were released. It's a long bit, this isn't it? Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it? I find it is, yeah. fascinating. We're in schools now. Hi, kids. Twenty ten, Samsung launched the Galaxy S. Uh, Twenty twelve, uh, ten years after the first text message was sent. British text volume reached its highest point with 151 billion cent in the UK. Unbelievable. Um, I hope you weren't bored by that segment. I found it very fascinating, Greg. What I think is fascinating is you edit this, so I think half of that won't even be in it. It won't. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is the history of the mobile slash cell phone. Now what's it time for, Greg? McDonald's? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Not particularly happy after watching the last one. You spoke way too much in that. Well, don't do Star Wars jokes then, Greg. Star Wars? Just don't speak, Jason. It ruins the entire ethos of this particular part of the performance.
Jason. Yeah? I just found out that I'm colour blind. You're not concerned or anything? No, because I know it's a joke, Greg. Oh, right. Well, I just found out I'm colour blind. The diagnosis came completely out of the purple. Obvious, isn't it? Light is better than heavy. It's obvious. I mean, at the beginning, they said, let's have some light. It wasn't, oh, let's have a bit of heavy while we're about it. No. Of course, whispers are lighter than ordinary chocolate. Women's brains are lighter than men's. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I suppose Cadbury's make them that way. What, women's brains? No, whispers. It's obvious why men's brains are heavier. Why? More dense. Whisper. Enlightenment from Cadbury. It's the end of the show, Greg. But first, we've just got time to do the Wall of Fame. Na, 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 na. Uh, our last Wall of Famer ended up having two weeks on the wall because yeah. I know. the printer was broken, but it is now fixed. Bought Let's be honest, it wasn't broken, was it? Yeah, I've just bought some ink for it. Uh, so you know what happens now. You get flushed. There you go, you've been flushed. You can now say I've been flushed by TNT. I mean, I think they've got better things to talk about, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> this week's Wall of Famer, Greg, is Christine Simmons. And the reason she's on the Wall of Fame is because she bought one of our T-shirts. Do we still have T-shirts for sale, We Jason? do have T-shirts for sale. Oh, There's a link in the description. Otherwise, it's uh, swag.totgoo.com. I'll put the link in the description. Is anyone buying any? No. I think that was probably the last one we sold. I think we're selling loads and you're taking all the profits. Yeah, raking it in. Um, yes, thank you for supporting us by buying a t-shirt and thank you for watching the show, Christine. Do you know, um, we don't plug the shirts enough, you know, because some, you know, like, what's the other one, Good Myth? Mythical. Yeah, I mean, they hound you with stuff, don't oh, they? yeah, but we're a bit more refined than that, aren't we? Greg? Yeah, we don't do this for the money. Please buy our shirt. Please. Anyway, uh, Christine sends that with love from the Simmons family in Hoosick Falls, New York. Greg, oh, can we I just are say, international. I love it, the fact that she is wearing our faces on her shirt. There we are. Yeah. And it's in New York. I went there recently, Jason. Yeah, I know. We know. Why didn't I? Didn't no one? No one recognised me, Jason. I was really angry about that. It's not a big place, is it? Because it's only Christine and her family who are in New York watching Greg. Oh, but thanks. We appreciate it. Thanks we do, for yeah. Watching. Thank you for thanks watching. Thanks for your support. I mean, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of stuff to watch out there. I know, yeah. And to be watching, you choose to watch us. Jason, I can't get up. Greg's got a bad back. Everyone from putting flat pack furniture together. <laughs> yes, you're not wrong. Yeah. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for your messages, by the way, about the flood. So, Christine, you're now on the Wall of Fame. Fame. Na, 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 na. If you would like a chance to be on the Wall of Fame. <laughs> if you would like a chance to be on the Wall of Fame. Send us your picture to TNT at... To I'll turn into a radio DJ then. Send us your picture to TNT at yes. topgoo.com. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> That's to nutter at topgoo.com. This doesn't have to... This has been with us since the start. It, has, yeah. it doesn't have to be in capitals. No, it doesn't. Thanks very much. We need to come up with some sort of... I mean, we can't steal it, but there's a channel out there called How Ridiculous, and they have the 44 Club, and that's for people who've made it right to the end of their video, and they only talk about it at the end of the video, and they say, you're in the 44 Club if you've made it here. We need to come up with something like that for people who are still watching. Really funny, because here's a funny story for you. I have no idea what you've just spoken about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No we idea. need to recognise the people who watch our whole video and are still with us at this point, because a lot of them will have turned off... 20 minutes ago, Greg. Yeah, probably. Um, but I like reading all the comments. Yeah, me too. So I think that, the, you know, when we have like 24 comments, I know 24 people have watched Tell this. you what we haven't done for a while. We started doing our favourite comments, didn't we? At this point in the show. Yeah. We? We'll do that again. What now? No, but I'll write it down to remember. Write it down, Jason. Favourite. Just next to next week's episode. Because we found next week's already. Should we give them a sneak preview? No. Oh. Comments. Well, why can't we just tell them about that? Because we might not do that, we might do something Well, let's, yeah, but then, then we have to do it then. Yeah, but then they might not tune in. They might think, oh, I don't want to listen to that episode. So Good. tune in, be surprised what we're doing next week. Because it sounds rubbish and that's why we're not telling you. <laughs> 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 we'll see you again next time on T.
I love it when you go all smooth and into your into your presenting mode. We'll see you next time here. I'm tea and toast. Right, let's go to McDonald's. Oh yeah.